Dear students, welcome to biology class. Here I am going to read the notes for chapter 1, sensations and responses. If you want to listen the class, please watch my previous videos. I will provide the link in description box. Chapter 1, sensations and responses. First side heading stimuli. The senses that evoke responses in organisms are called stimuli. Receptor the specialized cells in the sense organs and other parts of the body to receive stimuli are called receptors next heading role of nervous system the receptors receive stimuli and generate impulses these impulses reach the brain and as a result response occurs the nervous system control and coordinate these actions types of stimuli there are two types external stimuli and internal stimuli external stimuli means what which we feel from outside and internal means which we feel from inside examples touch and smell here and hunger and thirst here next you can draw the structure of neuron you can see different parts like dendrite so these branches are known as what dendrite and dendrites are the branches of dendron so you can see the main part here that is dendron So dendron divides and forms branches called dendrite. Okay. Now the longest filament you can see here. What is that axon? So axon divides into small branches called axonite. And at the tip of the axonite, you can see some bulb-like structures that is called a synaptic knob. And you can see here the Schwann cells also. So this is the structure of neuron. It is easy to study if you prepare a table like this. So the table should include three columns like part, peculiarity, and function. Dendrite, it is the branches of dendron, receive impulses from adjacent neuron. Dendron, short filaments from the cell body, carry impulses from dendrite to the cell body. Axon, longest filament from the cell body, carries impulses from the cell body to outside. Axonite, branches of axon. carries impulses to the synaptic knob synaptic knob tip of axonite secrete neurotransmitter schwann cell and circle the axon we studied about all these things in our previous classes if you have any doubt please check that okay next one flow chart of impulse movement that is dendrite dendron cell body axon axonite synaptic knob synapse and next dendrite of the next neuron this is how impulse moves next topic myelin sheath myelin sheath means it is the covering which we can see in axon then how it is formed you can see here formation in case of nerves formed of schwann cells but in the case of brain and spinal cord formed of oligodendrocytes then what are its functions provide oxygen and nutrients to axon accelerate impulses act as an electric insulator protect the axon and it is containing a lipid called myelin and it has a shiny white color so if you study this flow chart it is easy to understand all the details about myelin sheath white matter and gray matter white matter means the part of the brain and spinal cord where myelinated nerve cells are present is called white matter gray matter means the part of the brain and spinal cord where non myelinated nerve cells are present is called gray matter next very important topic generation and transmission of impulses so when the neuron is at rest outside positive charge inside negative charge you can see in the figure outside positive charge and inside negative charge what is the reason due to the difference in distribution of certain ions that is why there is charge difference outside there will be more positively charged ions and inside there will be more negatively charged ions when the neuron is stimulated 
outside negative charge inside positive charge so you can see here this is the stimulated portion outside negative inside positive because distribution of ions in that particular part changes so ion distribution in this part changes that is step wise neurons get stimulated distribution of ions changes outside becomes negative charge and inside becomes positive charge adjacent part gets stimulated impulses get transmitted as electric charges next topic synapse it is the junction between two neurons or a neuron and a muscle or a neuron and glandular cell structure of synapse this is the synaptic knob of the first neuron and this is the dendrite of the second neuron and electric impulses are coming through this way and we can see some vesicles here these vesicles break and releases chemicals called neurotransmitters so these are the neurotransmitters then they move through the space that is called the synaptic cleft then they attaches to the dendrite of the next neuron and it is continuing as electric impulse this is the structure of a synapse between two neurons function of synapse it helps to regulate the speed and direction of impulses significance of neurotransmitter when electric impulse from the axon reach the synaptic knob synaptic knob releases neurotransmitters into the synaptic cleft the neurotransmitters stimulate the adjacent dendrite or cell and new electric impulses are formed examples for neurotransmitters are acetylcholine and second example that is dopamine different types of synapse first one synapse between neuron and neuron second synapse between neuron and muscle cell and third synapse between neuron and glandular cell different types of neuron there are two types of neuron sensory neuron and second one motor neuron sensory neuron means they carry impulses from the body to the brain and spinal cord here they carry impulses from the brain and spinal cord to the body that is you can see here from body to brain and spinal cord sensory neurons are there from the brain and spinal cord to body motor neurons are there next topic nerves nerves are group of axons or nerve fibers they are covered by a tissue called connective tissue types of nerves there are three types of nerves sensory nerve motor nerve and mixed nerve first one sensory nerve it is formed of sensory nerve fibers carries impulses from the body to the brain and spinal cord second one motor nerve formed of motor nerve fibers carries impulses from brain and spinal cord to the body and third type mixed nerve it is formed of sensory and motor nerve fibers carries impulses to and from the brain and spinal cord next one nervous system so nervous system can be classified into two central nervous system and peripheral nervous system central nervous system includes two organs brain and spinal cord peripheral nervous system includes cranial nerves how many pairs 12 pairs and spinal nerves 31 pairs one of the important topic that is brain protection of the brain with the help of skull three layered meninges cerebrospinal fluid or csf functions of cerebrospinal fluid provide oxygen and nutrients that is giving nourishment regulate the pressure inside the brain and protect the brain from external injuries what is the peculiarity of cerebrospinal fluid it is formed from the blood and is reabsorbed into the blood now we can study about the structure of the brain on of the most repeated question in your exams so this is the brain and you can see the largest part cerebrum and this part is called cerebellum you can see the medulla oblongata here and thalamus is located here below the thalamus you can see the part hypothalamus so these are the important parts of the brain
Let us study each part in detail. Here a table with three columns, part, peculiarity and function. First one cerebrum, largest part of the brain. Outer cortex that is called grey matter, inner medulla, white matter. Center of thought, intelligence, memory and imagination, evoke sensation, control voluntary movements. Cerebellum, second largest part of the brain, seen behind the cerebrum, coordinates muscular activities and it helps in maintaining equilibrium of the body. Medulla oblongata, rod shaped, seen below the cerebrum and near the cerebellum, control involuntary actions like heartbeat, breathing, etc. Next part, thalamus. Seen below the cerebrum, act as relay station of impulses to and from the cerebrum, analyze impulses and send the important one to cerebrum. Next part, hypothalamus. Seen below the thalamus, maintain homeostasis. Next organ, spinal cord. First heading, protection of the spinal cord, vertebral column, meninges and cerebrospinal fluid seen inside central canal. Functions of the spinal cord transmit impulses to and from the brain and different parts of the body. It coordinates the repeated movements during walking, running, etc. Next about the structure of spinal cord. So this is a section of spinal cord and you can see different parts like white matter. So outside it is having white matter and inside it is having grey matter. And at the central part there is central canal. And you can see here dorsal root and ventral root. Remember what is dorsal root? Sensory impulses are reaching the spinal cord through dorsal root. And motor impulses are moving out from the spinal cord through ventral root. So dorsal root and ventral root together form one spinal nerve. Like that 31 pairs of spinal nerves are there in our body. Okay, dorsal root and ventral root. Dorsal root, sensory impulses reach the spinal cord through dorsal root. Ventral root, motor impulses go out of the spinal cord through ventral root. Formation of a spinal nerve, a dorsal root and a ventral root join to form a spinal nerve. There are 31 pairs of spinal nerves. Next topic is reflex action. What is that? The accidental and involuntary responses towards stimuli are called reflex actions. They do not happen consciously. Types of reflex action. There are two types of reflex action. Spinal reflex action and cerebral reflex action. First one. The reflex actions under the control of spinal cord is called a spinal reflex action. Example withdrawing hand while touching a hot object, withdrawing leg while touching thorn. Second one cerebral reflex action. The reflex actions under the control of cerebrum is called a cerebral reflex action. Example, blinking of eyes when light suddenly falls, closing ear while hearing loud noise. That is all reflex actions are not under the control of spinal cord. Cerebrum also control the reflex actions. Next is reflex arc. It is the pathway of impulses in reflex action. That is how impulses are moving in reflex action. You can see here from stimulus, receptor, sensory neuron, interneuron, motor neuron and finally to related muscle. Autonomous nervous system. It controls the activities that takes place beyond the conscious level. It is belonging to peripheral nervous system. So you can prepare a flowchart like this. Okay. What are the actions of sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system? First one, organ, sympathetic system, parasympathetic system, pupil. Pupil of eye dilates here, contracts. And salivary gland, saliva decreases here and here saliva increases. Trachea expands and here contracts. Heart, heartbeat increases here, heartbeat becomes normal. Stomach, gastric activities slow down, gastric activities become normal. Liver, glycogen converted to glucose, glucose converted to glycogen. Intestine, peristalsis slow down, peristalsis become normal. Urinary bladder regain normal state here but it contracts here. 
Hormone production increases here and decreases here. Next topic nervous disorders that is the disorders that are affecting the nervous system. You can see a table here which includes three column disease, cause and symptoms. First one Alzheimer's cause accumulation of an insoluble protein in brain neurons get destroyed. Symptoms are loss of memory, inability to recognize friends and relatives, inability to do routine works, Parkinson's, destruction of specialized ganglions in the brain, production of dopamine, a neurotransmitter reduces. Loss of body balance, irregular movement of muscles, shivering of the body, profuse salivation, epilepsy, continuous and irregular flow of electric charges in the brain, Continuous muscular contraction, frothy discharge from the mouth, clenching of the teeth, patient falls unconscious. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe the channel for getting more videos.